Welcome to Daily Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. A good Wednesday morning to each and all of you. Happy that you're here. Happy that you're a part of this great and growing family. I'm thankful for the privilege of just doing a segment of our life together. It was last week at the launch conference uh, that was held at our church. I, I met several several people uh, who are part of this family. It's always good to connect names and faces and attitudes and spirit. Of course, everybody knows we've got the best attitudes. Yeah, that's right. Some of the most humble people we know on <laughs> daily devotion. Oh, oh my, oh my. Yes, here we are, Wednesday. I am in the Philippines uh, with some wonderful people uh, from this nation. Always, I always enjoy uh, meeting our Filipino brothers and sisters with a delegation uh, from the U.S. And then also we have leaders from another country that are here and just a lot of good interaction taking place with these leaders. And um, it's a delight to watch. Uh, it's going to be the joy of heaven one of these days. Every tribe, every kindred, every tongue, every nation, we're all going to gather together. I got up, I got up this morning, and my morning now is pretty different than when your morning is uh, in the U.S., but my heart was just, I thought, I thought about that scripture that his mercies are renewed every morning. And, um, and then I thought, and, and then I thought about that verse of scripture where the manna, the Bible says in the pilgrimage, the manna descended with the dew. It was like the dew drops became manna. Our riding side saddle with the dew or accompanied with the dew, the manna would fall. I just began to think about, do you remember that old song, mercy drops round us are falling? Oh, that's, that's what I've been thinking about. And I just want to talk about mercy today. So many mercies. Jude, in that single chapter, you, 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 you search hard for anything positive to say in that single chapter, but here's one of the positive. It's in the opening salutations, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Mercy be multiplied. So many mercies. The adjective used to describe God more than any other in Scripture, Stephen Charnock called it the crown of God, is holy, holy. God is holy, 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 the threefold antiphonal chant of the seraphim who fly about the throne of God. That God has a character, and that character is holy. And God reflects that holy character upon us. Be ye holy, for I am holy. And we're to worship God in the beauty of holiness. We're to lift up holy hands. We're to have pure hearts, clean hearts, or holy hearts. We lift up holy hosannas. Let the fruit of our lips and let the meditations of our heart be pleasing in your sight, O oh God. So the, the number one adjective used to describe God, God is holy. If I had to pick a second one, I would have to say it's wrapped up in his mercy that God is merciful. He's full of mercy, merciful, full of mercy. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians called God the Father of mercies. The psalmist in John the Revelator, Psalm 36, Revelation 21, they see a flowing fountain of mercies coming from God. If you'll forgive me, I, I just, let me get into the first person here. Let me, let me speak on behalf of the Lord. I mean, that's 
One thing that an oracle does, one that we speak, we forth, forth tell, we speak on behalf of God. So let me get in the first person. And God would say, I cause goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. Psalm 23, Psalm 25, all my ways toward you shall be mercy and truth. To your old age, I am he who will see you through. Isaiah 46, I have made you, I will bear you, I will carry you, I will deliver you. I'll make an everlasting covenant with you that I'll not turn away from to do you good. For Samuel 20, I swear unto you that I will show you my kindness, the kindness of the Almighty. Psalm 87, I will not forget to show you my mercies. I soon as can forget to be God as to forget to be gracious. I like that. Whew. Psalm 102, while my name is Jehovah, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, I will never forget to show mercy to you. You get the picture, he's merciful. The earth shall quake and the hills shall be rent asunder, but my mercies shall not depart from you, neither shall my covenant of peace be removed. Thus says the Lord who has mercy on you, God is merciful. 41 times in the Old Testament, we're told to praise God. Why? Because his mercy endures forever. We're told 26 times in Psalm 136 to do that. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He's good. You get it. His mercy endureth forever. That's verse one. Here's verse two. Daily devotion, I'm going to point at you and you're going to say for his mercy endureth forever. Let's just get into the vein of this. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endureth forever. <laughs> yeah, those hand motions are required. To him alone who doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens and earth, to him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lives. We just go on and on and on. For his mercy endureth forever. We are thankful because he is merciful. Yes. That is something so very powerful. I love it. Let, let's hit the last verse in that psalm. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. For his mercy endures forever. We come not to Mount Sinai, but Mount Zion. Not to the Mount of Thunder and Lightning and Foreboding. We come, we come. It's like that old song we sing, Climb, Climb Up Sunshine Mountain. We're, we're coming up Sunshine Mountain. It's a mountain of mercy. But here's the promise when Jude said, Mercy be multiplied. That God will magnify, multiply, make many his mercy. Have you ever noticed how mercy many times in scripture is plural? Mercy. It's not mercy, it's mercies. Ephesians 4, Paul calls him the father of mercies. In other words, he has so much mercy, he, he magnifies it. He makes it many, he multiplies it. In Nehemiah 9, his mercies are called many. And he multiplies them to those in need. In 1 Chronicles 21, his mercies are called great. And he magnifies them to those in need. Isaiah 55, his mercies are called sure. And he expands them to those in need. In Psalm 119, his mercies are called tender. And he strengthens those who are weak. Whew. Though the fig tree doesn't blossom, nor the vine bear fruit, nor the flock bring forth, fear not, God says, for my compassions fail not. It's in the heart of the Ten Commandments you find it. He keeps mercy for thousands. Mercy for thousands. I guess that means mercy for thousands of people. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. His supplies are never exhausted. Maybe that's mercy for thousands of generations. What he's done for the past, he'll do for the present and the future. 
Maybe mercy to thousands of needs, mercy to thousands of transgressions, mercy. So many mercies. He keeps mercy for thousands. I believe God is wanting to magnify his mercies, multiply them, make them many to you. God is merciful. He magnifies those mercies, but they always have an object. God wants his mercies to be made many to you. Just as it says, have faith in God, and God is the object of faith. He is merciful to you. You are the object of his mercy. Your faith goes to him. His mercy comes to you. You you know And I've said this before, there are 15 Psalms of degrees, Psalms of ascent, that when the pilgrims would go up to Zion at one of the three mandatory feasts, they would sing these songs while climbing. The final Psalm, 134, pictures the weary pilgrims that they've arrived at the house of God when it's night. Praise ye the Lord, which stand by night in the house of the Lord. The 130th Psalm speaks of the many mercies. This is a climbing Psalm. It's the first of the final set of five of climbing psalms. Two-thirds through, and we're talking about mercy. Psalm 130, out of the depths have I cried unto thee, Lord. Mm. I will wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait on you. I'm going to wait for you more than they that watch for morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption. He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. It's plenteous. It's so many mercies. Daily devotion, family, it's so many mercies. Oh, I wish I could call your names right now. I wish I could see you. I'm on the road, so don't have the technical ability to do that. But I wish I could call your name. Because he wants to show you mercy. Mercy. Where does the fear and reverence of God originate? It originates from his mercies. Forgiveness is with you that you may be respected, awed, feared. Only when you've experienced great mercy does God truly become great in your life. Only when you experience the mercies of God, Paul said, can you offer your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. John Mason said it like this many years ago, from the altar of my heart, let incense flames arise. Assist me, Lord, to offer up mine evening sacrifice. Minutes and mercies multiply, have made up all this day. The minutes came quick, but the mercies were quicker. The minutes came quick, but God, your mercies came quicker. Your mercies beat the minutes. Your mercies got there before I knew I was going to need them. Mason finishes saying, new time, new favor, and new joys. Do a new song require till I shall praise thee as I would. Accept my heart's desire, I will praise him. I will praise him that his mercies outrun my minutes. That grace goes before me. That God, you move before me before I know I'm in trouble. A mercy. The dewdrops of mercy are already there. Lamentations 3, it's of the Lord's mercies were not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. May they be multiplied to you and I today. May they be magnified to you and I today. Solomon's temple, I, I can't imagine the splendor of it. It took the queen of Sheba's breath away. If you could step in the veil, if you could get in there, what you would see were mirrors that the walls, the floor were gold. 
And so you would see reflections of the Shekinah, reflections of the Ark of the Covenant, reflections of those 15 foot tall angels standing beside the Ark. You would see reflections of the blood of the Lamb sprinkled on the mercy seat all around you. You would see so many mercies, so many mercies today. I don't know why, I just felt impressed that I'm supposed to lift up mercy today. I want you to catch a glimpse of mercy. And maybe his mercy could fall on you. If I could highlight his mercy in some way, maybe, maybe stepping inside, you would see mercies reflecting and refracting all around you that there would be spokes and rays and shafts of remarkable mercy. I see mercy on every face. As surely as the sunrise comes, his mercy comes faster. Isaiah 55, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. The unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy on him. Because our God is capable of abundantly pardoning. The Lord is so merciful. Daily Devotion family, can I just say something? Don't you ever sell God's mercy short. One of the things that would upset me as a father was if one of my children made a decision for me, thinking they knew what I would do and what I would say. I mean, just as Adam and Eve ran from God, hid themselves from God, they they thought they knew what God was going to do and say they couldn't imagine the mercy that he showed. Don't, Don't sell your heavenly father short. If my kids would say, no, dad won't let us go. No, uh, we can't afford that. Or there's no way dad would ever let that. They don't know the heart of a dad to try to do everything he can do to bless his children and maybe to give his children things that he never had just to see the delight on the face for no other reason. Fear not, little flock. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't sell your heavenly father short. And when you begin to say things like, my God can't forgive. Oh, you don't know God. You don't know God. When you start saying stuff like that, you're selling your heavenly father short. Don't make a decision for God. Let God be God. Go to him. He's filled with mercy. He abundantly pardons. He'll be there for you. He will help you each and every day of your life. So many mercies. The new every morning. I pray pray you reap mercies today. I pray that you go traipsing through the grass and there's so much dew clinging to you when you get through. You realize God's not out of mercy. There's no shortage on God's mercy. He's the father of all mercies. Praise God. Thank you for being a part of this today. We'll be over on kycc.com, 745. You can join us over there. Facebook, like, follow, share. YouTubers, subscribe. Thank you for being you. Continue to keep us in your prayers today and the next few days as we're over here. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for sharing in daily devotion with Ken Gurley. We pray this ministry has been a source of encouragement and strength to you. Please be mindful that your financial support enables us to meet with you each day. To give a donation or connect with us, visit our website at cangurley.com. There you will also find the latest books, podcasts, and resources. Blessed 90 Days to Change Your World is Pastor Gurley's latest book. You can get your copy of this life-changing book at cangurley.com. May God's favor rest on you in every way until we meet again.